So today, the flex dryer that we have at the Compressor Best Practices Expo um, is our, our flex cycling dryer that utilizes a PCM that's a phase change material uh, versus a conventional type of cycling dryer that uses a glycol. Uh, the difference between our phase change and a glycol is that glycol is ever changing in temperature. It never holds a constant temperature. It's either getting colder or it's getting warmer. The difference between that and the phase change material is that a phase change material gets to a frozen point and it holds the same temperature, the same way an ice cube in a glass of water would do. If you measure the ice cube and ice in water, it'll measure around 33 degrees and it will hold that temperature just so long as you still have ice in the glass. Even as the ice is melting away in the glass, that temperature remains constant until all the ice is melted away. That's the same concept that we have with our PCM phase change uh, uh, material. As long as we still have frozen media, the temperature remains constant. When all of that media has gone to a, th a, a thawed state, then we see a temperature change. And at that temperature change, we know that we have changed states. This is our, our flex dryer that we launched um, a little over a year ago. This uh, started out from 100 CFM to 550 CFM. Recently, we've launched an expanded range of the flex dryer. This is our 8.1 flex dryer. This is 800 CFM. We launched from 800 CFM to 2000 CFM with an 800, a 1250, a 1500, and then a 2000 CFM dryer with all the same capabilities that we have with the original flex dryer. We've simplified the design. When you look inside this unit, you'll see that the heat exchanger encapsulates the PCM. There are no pumps to create any friction, any failure points. We've eliminated every failure point that we possibly could. When you take a look at the copper piping, everything is a very smooth wall type design. Um, any fittings that are not necessary have been eliminated and we use pre-bent piping to eliminate any potential issues and failure points that you would have with a conventional design. You'll find these applications in all manufacturing. Pretty much anywhere where you have an air compressor, there's a need to dry the air. Uh, this specific dew point that you're gonna find for this is a class four or five dew point, which is a refrigerated dew point from a positive 40, uh, excuse me, a positive 38 to a positive 45 degree dew point. So 80% of the industrial applications call for a refrigerated dryer. The reason why a cycling dryer is, is more compelling for this is because when the demand is reduced, the dryer shuts itself off. Instead of running constantly like a non-cycling dryer would do in really wasting energy that's not necessary. Typically what you have in a compressor system is, a compressor is not gonna run wide open 100% all of the time. There are, is gonna be fluctuation. There's gonna be fluctuation in demand, there's gonna be a fluctuation in temperature, and there's gonna be a fluctuation in pressure. And all of those things combined are the demand that is called upon by the dryer. So as we see these fluctuations in demands, it's not always necessary to, to have 100% of the flow going through the dryer. And so with a non-cycling dryer, the dryer runs all the time, regardless of the flow that's called upon to the dryer. With the cycling dryer, the dryer shuts off and it operates as efficiently as it possibly can. Ultimately, the benefit to the end user is twofold. Energy costs, right? So it's the almighty dollar and it's longevity of the equipment. So even though our dryer cycles on and off, um, we never wanna over cycle a dryer. So there are safeguards in place to ensure that we don't cycle more than six times an hour. So we are gonna see the benefit of cycling the dryer on and off, which is gonna extend the life of the entire unit. And then we're gonna also save the energy because that's the most important factor is our, is our, our cost, basically. You know, our launch was a stepped approach. This was a very new technology to the market. We had to baby step into it. We know that the, it's a proven, reliable product and it is superior to any other cycling technology on the market. But uh, 
our industry is resistant to change. So we need to bring in the smaller units first, get the, get the, the market introduced, get the feet wet of our customers to really understand and experience the product. And then we can expand it to make sure that we meet our customers' demands and the size range that they require. I think it's gaining popularity because um, there's a couple of reasons. Obviously the technology is superior to the other technologies. Also uh, the price point that we came out was very aggressive. It's, it's priced less than than what your conventional cycling dryer would be. Typically a cycling dryer would be around 20% over that of a non-cycling dryer. We price this somewhere in the middle. So we're very aggressively priced. Of course, we removed a lot of components. And so typically what you see is when your cell phone um, is reduced in size or any electrical component, uh, it's, it's a great convenience to us, but the price goes up. So what we actually did as a manufacturer was we removed some of the components that were not needed in this dryer and we passed on the savings to the customer.